This is Space Cats Peace Turtles, the unofficial podcast for Fantasy Flight's Twilight Imperium. Episode 111, Tournament Rules and Moderating. Music by Ben Prunty, featuring Matt Martins and Hunter Donaldson. uncomfortable that we have this kind of new setup where we're both actually able to look at each other on webcam and we do these episode introductions staring at each other Mm -hmm. it's really it's a different feeling than i'm used to yeah 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 (laughs) look at me say it (laughs) watch me say the words i actually moved my webcam to be at a place to where i can make better eye contact with you (laughs) it's the holiday season hunter it has begun yeah um my house is decorated I am Christmas man. I am holiday man. I want to paint. Am... I want to paint an image for the viewers of me <laughs> with like sunglasses on at like two o'clock in the afternoon, and I'm like tired. And who knows what I've been doing? And who knows where I've been? You know what I mean? Like that kind of image. Because I got to tell you, the comedy festival I've been doing this weekend, I've been living the rock star life. Okay, <laughs> I'm a freaking rock star now. And um, you know what? Might be too good for this podcast. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Well, I spent way too much money on beer this weekend. Uh-huh. Uh, and that's where my life is at. Ooh. Just spending money on... Exp- I, I, what's boy. sad about it? Here's what's sad about it. I spent way too much money on beer. What did that equal? Like five beers. <laughs> yeah, that's what you do. That's, <laughs> that's Matt's type of beer drinking. And is he's like, I bought this one beer and it's in a special glass. And it was... <laughs> They found it in an attic, and it was sitting there for seven years, and no one even knows what's in it, but it smells like cinnamon. Could be cinnamon. I don't know. Who can say? A cinnamon port. I, Which is not a beer. Honestly, it's all been things, a cinnamon it's all, porter is what I meant it's all, to say. It's all been things uh, that I'm excited to... Part of live streams now to me is us opening up nice fancy beers for stream and, and yes. slightly talking yes. about them as though that's relevant at all, which it definitely isn't. But there's just like a weird subsect mm-hmm. of our. Uh, we have a channel on our Discord called Aranam Beer, right? Which, that's a that's a killer. Well, and name. also, um, Matt, if I could give you a note, just kind of as a content creator, which I feel like you need <laughs> to start thinking of yourself as the fact that you have never really pushed. Your beer show, Crafted, oh, which is well, an awesome show that you should all check out. It's a Northwest <laughs> Arkansas craft beer interview show where Matt interviews someone. <laughs> and so if you like the specificity of a single podcast about Twilight Imperium, you'll ooh. love my craft beer show about Northwest Arkansas craft brewers. It has a lot of funny <laughs> editing in it where it's like, it's like, I don't know who, ed- do you edit it or does somebody I else? Edit it? It. Oh, okay. No, I do it. So you, so you add all this like after your interview, like self deprecating yeah. editing where I hate watching myself. So when I say something stupid, I replay it for the edit like four times so that everyone can recognize how dumb I sound. Right. Right. Oh yeah. Like the, I was watching one recently where you were talking to this guy about sour beer and yeah. you immediately you're like a lot of people say sour beer isn't really beer which it is beer of course it's beer <laughs> it's called sour beer um uh, and you keep making that point, and every time you make the point, you edited in a little note just saying, it is beer. It, 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 is, it is. Right. <laughs> yeah, I hate myself, and I don't know why oh, I host the show. I think or it's an adorable... Or why I host this show. Matt, or why I moderate games, or why am I a public persona at it's all? It's an adorable show, and I think you should all check it out. It's informative, and Matt has a very... Because Matt edits it, it's a very funny style, in my opinion. I love and it. And if you know anything about beer, you'll know that in the most recent episode... I I miss. I put in goo, or I put in goza when I should have put in goose, which is a horrible, horrible mistake. And I wait, what? Will never live it down. There's two types of beers. They're both sour beers. One's called goza. One's called goose. They're different, and they're spelled different. Oh my god, I didn't know that. Isn't I would have that made how, that same that's, mistake. That's how annoying beer is. Let's get on to the other specific Ooh, show that yeah. we do. Well, oh, we have an important one today. We have an important one today. We're going to talk about the tournament, but not just like, oh, I don't know. Let's talk about the tournament. But we're th- this is kind of like the the rules and regulations of our 
at least our 2020 tournament. I don't know about yeah. f- going into the future, but this is kind of where we're at. I think what we're doing today is more like, hey, this is these are our thoughts so far. This is where we're kind yes. of leaning. But we also want to hear from other people what what they think we're missing and what needs to be kind of added to the yeah, to the rule list. Especially added. Um, I will say everything we're about to say, if it makes sense, we're probably not going to budge on it unless you right. got some really solid reason. However, it's not. We're kind of bringing you what we've got thus far. It does not feel complete. Yeah. And it obvious, and it won't be complete. Like we'll right. we're gonna get halfway through this tournament and be like, oh, we learned a whole nother group of things that we yeah. need to know in order to run this tournament effectively. It's all a process. Um. But yeah, I do. We just want to go and get into it. I think I'm, we do. I, I think I want to preface it all with kind of saying it. To be really clear, there's so many things that can happen in a game of Twilight Imperium mm-hmm. that it's really hard to like say that there are hard and fast rules on anything. So we, you kind of have to take all of this as like really everything is a case by case basis, and right, we'll, you know, th- there's wiggle room in more or less everything we're doing here because the game becomes more about like the six specific players at the table that are involved and what kind of pace and etiquette and everything do they establish. But we're gonna try to steer things in particular directions and that's kind of more what this is going to be is like where where are we trying to to you know send it but at the same time uh and we'll get into this later like hunter and i won't be the only moderators in the prelims yeah so your moderator might kind of turn it in different directions as well so all of this is basically finite (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah and it's gonna be kind of a dance um we are, uh, December's going to be kind of the month for figuring out our moderating team. Those of you that have been expecting to hear from us about that, uh, yeah. expect to hear from us about that. Uh, we basically have <laughs> packs coming up this weekend, yep. and then I am going to be in Arkansas for like three weeks, um, basically just doing administrative work for this show and hopefully recording some extra episodes and also figuring out our moderating team, um, yeah. and testing them out, um, But let's get to our kind of first uh, guiding principle. This is the one I think we're most confident in. Um, We did this last year. We will always do this. In our Twilight Imperium uh, Patreon tournament, when you lay it, you play it. Yep. That is still true. And that 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 has a couple spots where it's especially important. But the, the guiding principle is we kind of have to take it from the perspective there's there are too many things in the game where a timing window is based off of a thing happening and in your home game of twilight imperium a thing happens something else happens someone else looks at the thing and goes oh wait i i want to go back to that thing that happened a couple like a minute ago because i'm not i wasn't even actually fully processing and and can we can we walk that back a little or, or whatever and too many things can break down that can get taken too far so rather than trying to come up with some kind of weird gray area we sort of have to just say nope once you do the thing that's it sorry no going exactly. back there's no it. we do not get to have wiggle room there let's uh, uh, the- let's break this down for for the layman though real quick cuz we we didn't we didn't actually explain it um lay it play it for us means whenever you throw if you throw a command counter down on the table you played it it's, yep. You can't. There is no throwing a command counter down and then being like, "Wait, actually, I don't really want to do this," or like, "I throw the command counter down and then I negotiate PDS." Right. If you throw the command counter down, it landed there. It got played. We're already yes. in. The, we're we're moving forward already. Right. The you same activated pr- the system. Yes. The same principle applies to action cards. Um, yep. If they can't, with a notable exception, if you lay down an action card out by mistake and it can't be actually played, then right. the, your only punishment there is that everybody kind of got to angle shoot off you for free. Or it's not really yeah. angle shooting at that point. It's just like, hey, everyone know. knows you have that card that you messed right. up. Right. Um, but we're not going to, we're not, that, that's a, I would say that's a place of leeway of like, if you just play a card by mistake, we're not going to make yeah. you throw it in the discard pile, but no, you did mess definitely up. Not. I will say, yeah, that's sort of in general, our approach is we will never, we, we never do something that like breaks the confines of the game, right? We'll never just be like, oh, well now you have to throw that out because right. you, that's your punishment. Uh, it's not, that's not really our jam, uh, but it is more about like you lock in a step and we have to move forward with the next step. So yeah, if you activate a system That's it. You've activated it. We are now moving on to the second step of the tactical action, which Mm -hmm. is movement. Um, So the the big thing to note there is for a lot of people, you have to, and and I encourage you over the next month, if you are doing practice games or whatever, 
start sticking to these rules because right. they are actually very difficult to break. Uh, I do this stuff all the time now because we've been doing it for like over a year and now I've formed a new habit. My old habit was definitely let's drop the command counter down and see how people feel about it. Uh-huh. Uh, but now it's more about grab the can- it, It's sort of chess rules, right? You move it forward. You kind of see how people feel about it. But if your finger is removed from that command counter, that's it. That's it. And so the same thing goes in, in tabletop simulator. If you have dropped the command counter onto the table, that's it. So nowadays in Tabletop Simulator, if I know I'm going to activate something, I pull my command counter forward. I'm thinking about it, but I set it off to the side of the map while I'm thinking about the action that I want to take, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the really convenient thing with Tabletop Simulator, and I hope it'll all work, TTS always has glitches and stuff, but the, the thing that will be in place nowadays is when a person, if it's the person's turn and they activate a system, the, the whole chat is like notified, like a little bubble right. comes up and says, so-and-so activated. And that is more or less going to be our like, okay, that's it. You drop the token because the thing popped up. So we know that we're moving forward and that's the, you know, that's the end of that uh, timing. Mm-hmm. Um, so th- this principle, like we said, this goes with command counters. This goes with action cards. It goes with promissory notes. Anything that can be played, mm-hmm. you need to change your thinking from do it and see what happens to suggest that you're going to do it and see how people feel about yeah. that. There's yeah. a very important difference in those two things of make the threat before you've taken the action. And I think that's the way that people have to change how they play uh, Twilight Imperium mm-hmm. is, is more about like have the conversation before the action takes place. Or think before you actually go for yeah. it. Yeah, it's just right. like get all of that internal stuff done before you're making your move. Uh, I want to throw out another lay it and play it uh, just so that... Just so we're being thorough, uh, strategy cards, if you flip them over, you press yeah. the play button. You, we're not, especially with how difficult it is to moderate all of the strategy card phases, yeah. we, we cannot have any leniency there. If you click trade and we start going down that rabbit hole and you decide you don't want to, uh, we can't turn around at this right. point. Right. So again, it's it's more about saying, I'm thinking about playing trade. Let's talk through that stuff mm-hmm. before I flip it so that I know if it's a good idea for me to go ahead and now flip trade. Yes. Yes. Um, so yeah, all, all of those things apply. And, and basically all of this serves the idea of timing windows, which is something that your moderator in your game is going to be kind of regulating. Um, I will say... Try to think of this episode, too, not just as a what's happening in our tournament, but a way to think about your own home games. A lot of these things we're going to start talking about, as you get good at them, they can actually speed up your play. Mm -hmm. And if you have one person, even if someone is in the game, they can be kind of assigned as a moderator to just keep the flow going. And these these things are going to be useful tips just in, like, your everyday game. Yeah. Um, So discussing timing windows... uh, this is something we had so much trouble with last year, and it took us a long time to like figure out where where do we lie in in the importance of like announcing things, right? What mm-hmm. are we supposed to announce, and what do we not need to announce? the The best example I have is uh, at the start of the agenda phase. There's an action card wh- whose timing is at the start of the agenda phase, and that's mm-hmm. ancient burial sites. Is it my job to say, okay, we are now at the start of the agenda phase? Does anybody have ancient burial sites? Yeah, that, that's well, not, that gets that's, happened that, a lot, though, now, because it, that's the only one. It's right, so that's the only one, and that one's easier, but that sort of thing happens all the time, and I want to be really clear that a moderator's job shouldn't be the, the second part of that, yes, right? I'm agree. not here to suggest to you what cards can be played right now. I'm not here to play for you. I'm not here to make your decisions. I'm only here to tell you when a thing was happening. Yes. What was really rough last year is usually our moderators are in the game master position which means they can see everything they know every single card they know what all's going on and where that gets really complicated is when i know you have an action card that can can be used in this timing window do i make sure you heard me say okay we're at the start of combat does anyone want to play a start of combat thing or whatever um same thing goes with secret objectives secret objectives the action phase ones have like a particular time you know it's like Mm -hmm. when you kill the ship is when you destroy their greatest ship and I've, there were plenty of times where someone would destroy their greatest ship and then move right on to ground combat. And I would kind of be like, you sh- is there anything you want to do before we move right. on? Mm-hmm. Because you're... And then 
it was always awkward when the, then we would get to the end of the combat and I would have to kind of be like, you know, technically I'm not supposed to let you score that point because you were supposed to score it when you destroyed when you the destroyed ship. It, yeah. And I want to be clear because we're doing this episode, that's the kind of rigor we're going to have this mm-hmm. year. I mean, we're going to try to. Maybe there will maybe we'll wiggle every now and then, but we're going to do our best to be like, no, this is the timing window. You have to remember that stuff. Yeah. Because if anything too, for a tournament, that's what separates like the great players from the ones who aren't as experienced. And that's what we're looking for. Our finals game is supposed to be the six best players in the world. Right. So it should be the six players that are like hyper aware of every single thing at every moment. Right. So we're trying to not have very much wiggle room here. Yeah. Um, and we, we are going to have a team of moderators and they're all going to bring slightly different styles. I think, especially when it comes to announcing timing windows. Yeah. What I want to say is that there is, there are some windows that I think we are going to note to them as being critical. I think, I think ground. I think combat windows are really important. Yeah, like I, I think, yeah. I think those should be pretty much by the book announced as we go. Yeah. But do not depend on your moderator to announce every single window because they're right. going to have different. They're going to have different styles themselves. So some, yeah. you know, like one one moderator might be really keen on uh, running the status phase very by the book or like every time an action card is being played, giving the three count or whatever right, for right. sabotage or, or whatever it is that it's going to happen. Um, and other moderators won't. But one thing that I want to say that I think is a, an important idea that I've always tried to stress to everyone in the tournament, um, even last year, I think this is proper etiquette. If you need to think... Yeah. At all. If you need us to stop where we are at, you should say that. Say, yes. hey, this window that we're in right now, or just say hold or wait or like we stop. Let's let's wait for a second so that I can think about what I'm gonna do. And sometimes yeah. it allows a little bit of angle shooting. I mean, if you if you say hold and it's because you're thinking about playing a sabotage, that can be kind of readable sometimes. Right. But it's still better to actually make up your mind than let things go forward. Now, I also, yeah. I think, just illuminated a um, meta play of pretending you have a sabotage by saying hold, right. um, <laughs> which I now hate because that will slow down the game, but I guarantee someone will probably do that in the tournament. Yeah. Sure. Um, oh, and now I just tripled the amount of people that will do it. <laughs> wow. I really messed well, we'll up go, there. Well, we'll get to that stuff later. We'll, we'll talk more about mm-hmm. the, 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 the stall tactics that are not Yasaro's stall tactics. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, in, yeah, w- with regards to those timing windows, yeah, the big thing is know when you want them to, to hang on. Uh, most moderators are going to give some sort of like three count. That's not going to be a requirement. It's not like there's only three seconds you have to decide to do anything. Right, right. But it's going to be like, a, okay, this is the start of combat. Anybody? And what what's really helpful here, honestly, is with any of these things, like, be working with your moderator. And this mm-hmm. is going to be the trend for this whole episode is the moderator is there to help you, but the moderator is not there to be a computer that is playing the phases of the game for you, right. and you only input when you have a thing to do, right? The whole idea is, like, if the moderator says, are there any start of action, start of combat abilities? Well, the speaker is supposed to go first. The speaker should right away, if you have something or not, say so. It's like, nope, I don't have anything. Okay, defender, no? Okay, great, let's move on. That's how you keep the flow of everything going as fast as possible, if everyone is always paying attention. And that's going to be a big part of why the moderator is there, is just to keep you aware of where the action is. So right. if you are trying to kind of tune out and focus on, like, look planning out your next turn or something you need to keep an ear on what the moderator is doing so you know what timing windows are happening and you don't miss an important announcement all right so um that's about enough as far as like how we're gonna how much we're gonna talk about timing windows in this specific episode if you want more of a rundown of timing windows this is definitely not something we've we've never talked about um i would recommend checking out our action cards episode where we uh we nailed it actually is what we did (laughs) if you guys remember we did nail it on that one Um, especially the first action cards episode but they're probably both worth checking out yeah as just 67 and episode 69 episode 67 is really the one where we we kind of went over all the crazy timing windows to be Mm -hmm. aware of Mm mm-hmm um, and that that's just important because a lot of the timing weirdness has more to do with action cards. Most of most of just like regular play stuff, those windows are pretty obvious once you start paying attention to them. And and if you don't, don't worry. Like it's not yeah. it's not going to be a nightmare learning to play Ti this way. Those yeah. of you that yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, kind of within those timing windows things is so so the point all, to all of that is to say. Really important timing windows will be announced, but we're not going to announce 
every single available timing window. You still will have to keep track of those things, right? We, we can't plan for every single action card or every right. law that's in play that lets you do a new thing. We're not going to just like open up a window for everybody to do everything. We will regulate specific phases. We will be moderating phases of the game. So let's go over kind of what are those different phases where the moderator really will sort of take the reins and control, you know, okay, we are moving from this step to this step. Mm -hmm. Is anyone doing anything during this step? Right. Uh, and the first one, well, let's, let's finish the conversation of tactical actions because that's really kind of one of the biggest ones and the the things that will be highlighted is the the specific steps as listed like on your command sheet or in the rule book right activation that's a timing window the actual movement of ships the way we did movement last year was uh not a lay it play it sort of thing it was tell me when you have finalized your movement yes, right yeah. it's 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 not a oh you picked up the ship and you dropped it there that means it's definitely moving no, we no. totally understand that people have to sort of run the math mentally and it really helps to physically move stuff around and understand where things are coming from and right, going to right so we are okay with you moving all those units around but then the only other timing window that comes up is after movement so when you finished moving ships we say okay is that your final answer you can lock it in and then we move on uh from there basically movement then goes into space combat which most of that is regulated uh and then moving into the invasion step and then production so you know five simple steps that we will kind of help guide you through with more steps if there's a if there's a combat right announce retreats there, there's a lot of stuff going on in combat that will be more or less um regulated now if, if the moderator isn't specifically listing every single thing that's fine you still need to pay attention to your own cards and speak up but let's talk right. about some other phases of the game that will be pretty regulated uh, yeah, so status phase first and foremost is pretty much all moderator stuff, and I want to I want to throw out a little nitpick here. Um, keeping the points together yeah. is simple, right? Super simple. Anybody can count <laughs> up points in Twilight Imperium, except for it isn't that simple, and people mess it up all the time. So right. you're just go ahead and assume. I even actually at one point was thinking about suggesting that we make um, one of those TTS. Uh, like cloud areas where yeah. they can't actually see or interact with the right. with the scoreboard. Well, um, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this much, Hunter. This is actually probably news to you. There, there have been some TTS modders uh, in our community that have been working on stuff. They kind of hit us, up, hit me up for for requests of things we would want. I think what we're going to end up having actually is for the score objectives phase uh, of or or anything dealing with the objective area. Nobody else is allowed to touch it, period, straight up and down. Only your moderator can touch that area because there's actually going to be some weird new code stuff Ooh. that will be easy for everyone to break, but also very easy if only one person is in control, they won't break it. Like it's it, you just you do the exact thing and mm -hmm. it will automate showing who has how many points. Like when you drop I an objective down it. and you put a command token on it, boom, it moves them up a point or whatever. That's so that so part will be automated, which is why it's important. Don't touch that stuff. Let, yep. let your moderator control it. You're going to score in order every single time. Mm -hmm. Then you will reveal a public objective. Then you will draw action cards. Uh, or more importantly, from, from after revealing objectives, there's a button on uh, strategy cards nowadays in Tabletop Simulator that is basically a do the rest of your status phase stuff, do your homework. Um, your moderator will tell you when you can hit that button. And yeah. it's very important to not just automatically go to hitting that button because there are certain parts of the game where you can no longer just hit the button uh, if the action card deck gets low. Stuff like that can screw up functions in Tabletop mm -hmm. Simulator. Mm -hmm. So it's important for you to listen to your moderator and when they say, okay, everyone go ahead and do your status face stuff, boom, you can do it. The order won't matter. Um, but when the order does matter, they're gonna step in and say, hey, don't nobody touch your button. Let's do this in speaker order or whatever. Um, right. So that that will more or less be your your status phase um, rundown, right? It'll it, it will be fairly regulated. There's only a couple timing windows that come up. You know, there's returning strategy cards. You could always political stability things like that come up. Um, and the timing window is more or less at the end of the status phase with that one. So so just don't don't freak out too much. It's just a button you got to click, and don't click it if the moderator tells you not to. Right. right? And your status phases will go smoothly. Right. Um. Other thing about status phase uh, that this is just kind of this is just nice stuff. Like it's nice if you do this. Um, yeah. I think requiring this of people would be kind of impossible. But whenever you score an objective, um, 
explain it. The moderator is looking at a lot of stuff when scoring yeah. is happening. Explain how you're scoring it, even if it's obvious, right. even if it's like, I have two tech and two colors. Okay, well, what tech do you have? You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like, just letting, or even typing that into the chat is really yes. sweet. Like, I, I really like the idea of not only just like, you know, doing the tournament by the book, um, but also just those little things you can do to make the game run smoother. Just yeah. make it, make every time you do anything in our tournament, make it like you're, you're explaining what is happening so that yes. the clarity is maintained for everybody. Right. Basically. Right. Typing things into chat is really, really, really helpful, mm -hmm. uh, especially when we get into later stuff like what you produce or what tech you buy. Um, mm -hmm. But even in this sense of like, hey, I'm ready to move on to the agenda phase, like typing that into chat, having yeah. the moderator have a visual record. First off, the moderator probably isn't going to know every player, which means they're not going to have learned all of your voices right, right away, right? They're not yeah, going to know who sure. specifically is talking sure. all the time. So if you type in chat, it's just, it is always a clearer way to go. Um, the agenda phase is another one that will be kind of structured and and that's really important in terms of if you are passing on writers or whatever typing in chat or hopefully we'll have you know last year we had a pretty nifty tool that broke a lot uh maybe we'll get a better tool people have been using these little tokens for the agenda phase recently i hate the token method uh, so we're, we're looking into some way to help regulate the agenda phase but like we recently said in our agenda uh, phase strategy episode, we are going to be regulating that. That will be start of agenda phase. Mm -hmm. When you reveal an, reveal an agenda, after you reveal an agenda, okay, now go ahead and vote starting left of the speaker, second agenda, yada, 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 yada. All of that will be broken down and run specifically by your moderator. I think with, uh, with the agenda phase, I will say this, it, it does feel like those of you that play TTS pretty regularly, I feel like our tournament rules have kind of been pervasive for agenda yeah. phases. I see a lot of agenda phases that are basically run exactly yeah. the way we would run it in a tournament thing. So I wouldn't stress too much about that. That the thing about the agenda phase is that you kind of it kind of has to be run basically. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If, the if only if way to make it really happen smoothly is for someone to run it. Yeah. Um. So even if this isn't a tournament game you're playing, I suggest doing the the agenda phase moderation anyways. Oh, because it's sure. just it's just very very helpful. Yeah. Otherwise, it could be such a mess if you don't do it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Now we're basically going to talk about uh, strategic actions, um, all yeah. of the strategy cards, and to what extent we are going to moderate yeah. those. Um, right. Some of them, the I mean, the TTS modders have done such good work, right? That like they kind of run themselves now, which is beautiful. Like right. I, I wish we had had it to the extent we have it now. Uh, last year, basically, would have made it run a lot smoother. But there are still some that basically kind of leave it up to us to figure it out. Um, leadership is a good example and a simple example. Um, whenever you execute the secondary action of leadership, we are going to need everybody to type how many counters they bought, basically, yeah. into chat. Yeah. We need a record and, of it. And this is the first time to bring up, I think, we, Hunter, you brought this up, and I like this idea, and I think we might push for this, of instituting a buy area, a little yeah. box on your zone that we're going to designate as your buy area. Um, so when you normally spend stuff, in Twilight Imperium, you just flip it over, right? Yeah. And, that, and that's it. Uh, or you or you spend the trade uh, goods. We're probably not going to do that this year because it's it's pretty difficult for a moderator to keep track of if somebody it's basically flipped impossible. a planet. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's just a really easy area for someone to either cheat or more importantly just ex just mess it up. Like it's just really easy to yourself lose track of those things. I, I'm not accusing anyone of cheating last year on spending money mm -hmm. uh, but it, it absolutely happens that like a planet got flipped when it wasn't supposed to or whatever. Um, so for us it's more important that you type in chat, okay, I'm buying two counters, and then set your six influence aside mm -hmm. for those counters. Just set them in the little box that we will designate, and then the moderator, when they are able to get to checking on everybody who spent what, when, they can see that, they will flip it for you and then return it to your to your area. If it's your yep. planet card, they'll right. return it to your area, whatever. But I think we're going to institute a little pay area. This is going to come up in any form of uh, production as well. If you set the units aside with the money that you're spending, uh, the moderator can very, very easily check that out, give it a quick glance and be like, okay, that one's good to go. Move yep. on. Right. Rather than what always slowed things down was someone going, well, I'm going to build two cruisers and a carrier for four trade for f four dollars. And, and then the moderator is like trying to catch up with like, okay, well, where did those four dollars come from? And mm -hmm. it was just always incredibly messy. And we don't want to institute a thing where, 
the progression of the game can't move on until everyone has spent their thing in right, order because right. that that will make games take 13 hours and we're not interested in doing that uh games last year ran very long and we are trying to find ways to expedite things so if we can just have people set stuff aside then other people can move forward with the their actions while the moderator plays a little bit of catch up checking on what was spent right right and uh i also want to say that i think the way that the games are going to work in general uh, it's not going to be that your moderator is out on their own by themselves the entire time um i think the way that I want to try and schedule these games is scheduling a lot of them to happen at the same time. And yeah. then either me or or you or both of us, preferably, yeah. are kind of bouncing around helping out like yeah, through, through various phases. So I would not be surprised if like there's a lot of situations where you're having like where you have somebody that's actually checking your builds that's separate from the moderator yeah. himself or herself. Um yeah, uh, we should move on to diplomacy, though. Let's talk about diplomacy. Yeah, uh, diplomacy is almost identical to leadership in that the button um, is I'm glad it exists, um, but uh, it basically doesn't give a lot of detail. So you essentially if you're doing the secondary of diplomacy, you need to type what planets you're refreshing into the chat. Obviously, yeah. the primary is super obvious. Um, you probably don't need to worry about typing that. No, but secondary not. stuff will be very necessary. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, politics strategy card is a really another really easy one. Um, they'll try the moderator will probably be there to make sure you do things in order, meaning the speaker token needs to be determined before yes. the owner then looks at the agenda deck or whatever. Um, and then from there, it's kind of a free for all. Generally, it's like fine. Um, th they're going to want to make sure you've spent the token before you draw the action cards. Um, that's a, that's kind of another big thing in general with strategic actions is don't don't spend the token. And then be like, oh, I already spent it when the moderator comes checking. Set that token aside and say, hey, here's my token. I'm spending it now that you're paying attention. Or put put it, it in that spent box or yeah, whatever. Put it, put it in the spent area. Yeah, totally. Um, so uh, the other thing then, though, is we, we typically, just to keep things moving smoothly, we just draw action cards as you need them until the action card deck is low. And once the action card deck gets low, then it is very important that the moderator runs the turn order of how you're supposed to do politics. Right. right. Uh, so that, that's the only time you really have to pay attention to politics is when there's like six cards left in the deck or something like that uh construction is a really really easy basic one um but similar to diplomacy uh it's it's preferable if you just announce where you're dropping the pds or space yep. dock yep uh what what system you've activated as a as a result we you know we want to see you move that token in or whatever um so as long as you announce it and then we can look over and see that a token is there then you're good to go pretty pretty quick and easy painless one right um the next one is not painless at all and is the probably the <laughs> biggest challenge to doing this tournament yep. to the extent where I think we should just get rid of it, but trade. <laughs> um, trade, oh dear. Um, Boy, anytime someone uses the trade card in the tournament, it is, it's rough. But yep. I will say this, almost nobody ever does it in the proper order, yep. but if you do trade exactly in the order that it needs, that it needs to happen, it does generally go faster and make yep. more sense. Yes. Um, yeah, and that's how we will be doing it. If you look at the trade strategy card, it gives you little bullets of this happens, and right. then this happens, and then this happens. Yep. Um, uh, the, for for a good breakdown, we've done a breakdown on like kind of trade etiquette before, and like what to do. I mm -hmm. believe that was the first. That was our trading with Hakan episode, which right. looks like it was episode thirty four. Uh, we broke down a lot of the like, hey, you're supposed to do this first, and then do this kind of stuff. Uh, if you need a refresher, go check out that episode because yep. it can help you kind of get get your brain and check on on how to run that stuff. I see that as a complaint with a lot of players on Tabletop Simulator, Simulator is like how crazy people get with trade. Your moderator will be keeping a close tab on that. And this is the most important one where don't flip the trade strategy card until you're ready to do all the stuff because once you flip it, we're, we're going through the steps now. We're mm -hmm. handing you your three trade goods, then we're doing this. Remember that you announce who you will be allowing to do the secondary for free but then the secondaries fire in order during the secondary timing window it's it's just a whole thing so just let your let go and let god god being your moderator mm -hmm. in this instance mm -hmm. i would love uh honestly if 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 we can get any uh moderating tools that specifically make trade easier like, i don't I'm know thinking, if you can well it's think about a... this though what if what if people didn't have now i'm just having ideas on the show but whatever oh, no. um what if there are no commodity bags anywhere those don't exist <laughs> yeah um, right, right 
and the moderator in their moderating area have buttons yeah. they can press that refresh people's commodities and right. or give you know gives three trade goods to so and so or whatever yeah. or you know now that actually might even make it harder but whatever at what? the very least though I think it may be worth having the moderator be the only one who is allowed to handle commodities and trade goods during the trade phase because people often like grab one too many or like make up these crazy complicated deals that they actually then do the math wrong on yep. and like yes. how many they should end up with so it's just way easier if it's like uh, a, a big one for me is like just actually do the swap mm -hmm. if i say three for four hand me four and i will hand you three yeah it's just it's just as simple as that right, rather right. than trying to oh no you just gain one it's like no 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 i want to i want to hand the stuff over right because it's right. just it helps the keeps, brain keeps everything better. straight yeah, yeah. And, and and if you need any inspiration uh schroeder's games are available on our youtube <laughs> track them down uh and you could just see how it's done basically right. <laughs> magnificently um, yeah next up is warfare uh, Warfare is a pretty simple one, except for, again, just the normal production. Please set aside your stuff. Type out what your build is going to be, what you're buying. More importantly, just we'll have a little buy box in every play area, and you know we'll do that. If somebody needs Warfare to be done in order, meaning secondary is done like in speaker order from the active player, we will do that. But generally speaking, that's not an actual important consideration people are making. So we would probably just let everyone build what they want to build. Yeah. I Yeah, I feel like that one... That one is kind of up to the players to let us know if that is important to you. Yeah. And then I think, I mean, I think that one is fair. If if, yeah. if you want to know that, that's fine. Right. Same uh, thing goes with tech. Um, right. Tech is super, tech is super convenient because this one, actually the, the little thing that pops up when you play tech is incredibly it's detailed. Beautiful. Beautiful. You don't have to type anything in a chat. You just follow the prompts, tell it what you're getting and the moderator will see all of that. But this is just another situation of we'll do the order if we have to. Like if you're only going to get... If a Joel Nara is in game, we will probably be paying close attention to tech order because research agreement can make things go a little crazy. Oh, that's true. Beyond that, generally speaking, eh, just get your tech unless you need to know that so and so is getting a tech and you're looking to get a tech that counters it or whatever. Right. We well, understand that those instances come up. And in which case, I mean, always remember that I mean, you can't just like ask you. We can either do it loosey goosey or yeah. we do it in the order we're supposed to. So like, right. don't waste time if you actually don't have order advantage yeah. on the. Pl you know what I mean? Like if somebody's like, oh, I want to see what so and so text to, and it's like, well, you actually don't speak you your order to go you're, first. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna have to right. go first, so it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> yeah, um, Imperial obviously pretty easy uh, until the secret objective deck is low. Yeah. Um, and then when it gets low, we need to do it in the right order. This is also, right. this one's interesting because basically in TTS, you have to do it this way regardless. So like, yeah. like most people are used to playing this way. If you play any TTS, if you don't, Hey, you know, we, we got a system for that. Um, yeah. we'll, we'll get you, I'll get you in my dojo and I'll train yeah. you up. It basically comes down to the issue of once, once people start having their third secret objective, you are supposed to discard before the next person draws and that's what will be heavily regulated yeah um really the same thing uh will be kind of important with when the first uh when the, the imperial owner pops the primary we will you know that's the same thing of like hey let's make sure we do this objective thing first before everyone starts asking for secret objectives yes. let me let me move this person's points around before we do any other funny business yes. so that's the only other part where the the order really matters yes Okay, all right. We just did all of them, all eight. That's beautiful. Um, <laughs> we want to talk about pacing now. We want to talk about how to basically, and I feel like we we're kind of covering this as we're talking yeah, about the strategy definitely. cards. But like, we, let's we want things to happen with clarity. Yeah. Um, and honestly, I I feel like there's a lot of people whenever they play in the tournament or whenever they play in heavy heavily like moderated games, there's a want to like oh I want to rush I want to go fast yeah um and because this is an official tournament we need to understand what is going on so yeah. you rushing makes the game slower like that's right. that's just a fact that's just how it's yeah. gonna go so Definitely. if you want to rush as an individual and get through all these things very quickly um that is not going to make the game go any faster. So it's kind of self-defeating. So yeah. let your moderator set the pace and right. make it all about clarity of information. That is the yeah. thing that you're trying. You're trying to make everything as clear to the moderator as possible yes. so that we can move 
forward, basically. Right. And your moderator will be the one who is there trying to keep things moving forward. And the moderator is yes. never there to make you feel like you have pressure to act quickly, right? Mm-hmm. We don't want people to make mistakes that they then later regret and then they get to blame on the moderator. No. We're not looking to make that happen. Absolutely but at the not. same time, your moderator will be there regularly saying, hey, so-and-so, it's your turn. Do you have an action? Yes. That's not them saying, hey, you better hurry up and do a thing. It's them sh- giving you that same clarity they want you to give them in yep. return. Yep. I do this all the time in my personal games. And I try to make sure people know I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just always reminding them if there's a turn. Because I've been there. I've I've sat for two minutes and then someone goes, hey, it's your turn. And I go, oh gosh, I literally had no idea it was my turn. I'm right. sorry. Let me. So right. they're just always there to kind of remind you that, hey, we we are still waiting on you to do a thing. We know that this game takes lots of thought and 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 planning. So it's just about a kind of consistent reminder of, hey, just so you know, it's still your your turn to do something. Are you going to do something? Uh, where this gets weird is kind of when etiquette starts to come into play, which is to say we don't want people to just be like unnecessarily stalling things out either. That's, that's not helpful mm-hmm. or kind to your other players. Uh, the same thing goes with like completely ridiculous deal making where someone like won't let it go. Uh, don't be surprised if your moderator is like, hey, it's time to move on. You need to drop it. There, no one's going to buy your sabotage, so move on. Right. Um, and you should you, you need to move on when the moderator tells you to. Uh, right. They're not going to do that if like they can tell you're still working out a possible deal. But mm-hmm. if it looks fruitless, you got to quit wasting everybody's time. Right. I have, I've been in those trade negotiations that go way, way, way too long to no avail. And that's what our moderators are going to be kind of trying to look for is like, hey, let's let's not we don't want um, players energy level to be a determining factor in who wins either. We don't want yeah. someone is like, well, it was a 12 and a half hour long game right. and I'm dead inside. Won so that's attrition. why I lost. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And also, I think, again, this all just kind of comes down to communication. Uh, if somebody is trying to make open offers to the table, it's not like that is not allowed in the tournament. But if someone is interested in an open offer, you should speak up. Like, yeah, say absolutely. say something. Make make it clear that this is not fruitless if it yes. actually isn't. Right. Um, but if it's fruitless and it seems obvious, then like we just have to move on. Like we yeah. can't we can't hold in every single window because of something that might happen. Right. Essentially. Exactly. We uh, can't have so a ten that, minute long right. like process of just deciding if you're going to refresh extra it should not take that long to make that decision yes um so speaking more on etiquette uh this is where things will get probably weird now i will say we didn't have any issues last year so i trust that we will continue to not have any issues because mostly this community is plenty nice and we and we can and when the when people feel like the games matter they seem to actually behave better which i think a lot of people would think would be the opposite if people really care they get super heartfelt and crazy but we haven't seen that to be true um i I will say from an etiquette standpoint uh anger is allowed harassment is not right and there's a there's kind of a fine line but i i can't i can't be an honest person and say like hey no one should yell (laughs) at the table because that's not how the game goes and sometimes that's like what your tool is right sometimes your tool is i have to like show I'm really upset about this thing that happened so that maybe people take it easy on me later. So Mm -hmm. we get that like those sort of table talk things are a tactic that people are using and we're okay with that. But what you can't do is start using really rude name calling or like just there, there is a step too far that you can take and your moderator will tell you when to chill out, take it, take it a step. I mean, I, I think it is uh, perfectly acceptable to be like, I'm very salty even to be very salty, even about something that a player specifically did. But if like, if I'm looking at, if I'm playing against Matt and I'm like, you idiot, Matt, Matt, yeah. you're an idiot. You're a dumb, <laughs> but idiot, <laughs> dumb head. And I'm not talking about the faction you're playing, even though you are playing the butthead faction, um, <laughs> which is just kind of a weird coincidence actually. But and I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you, Matt, the person, loser, idiot, jerk face, <laughs> jerk, just butt face, just kind of dingus loser. Like this, like what I'm doing right now, this would be an example of like what isn't allowed. Matt, oh, okay. You big, dumb, <laughs> you dumb jerk, you butt, you jerk butt. Like that wouldn't be allowed. 
in the tournament. Is this a good time to talk about rage quitting? You can't rage quit. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, we'll track you down. <laughs> no. Uh, so yeah, the, all all of this is to say like keep your anger levels in check. Keep keep the the tone you know civil and and to be honest too from the other side's perspective if you are uncomfortable with the way a person is acting uh message your moderator first and let them know you actually don't think this is funny or whatever right. and they yes. they can step in because i've certainly been there as well where i play with hunter and hunter knows how i gets and my mm-hmm. friends know how i get and they know to not take it seriously it's it's nothing uh i'm kind of especially when we're on stream i'm putting on a show uh that's a problem that i have is like me like letting the stuff elevate even it's more. It's wild. <laughs> it's like people are watching you and you're like, I'm going to get even wilder right yeah. now. It's like, but, uh, you'd be good on reality TV. <laughs> like you, you have reality TV instincts. instincts. But if there's a player at the table that is not aware of that, is not familiar with me at all, it's not very appropriate for me to fly off the handle like that. Mm-hmm. And so there might be players at the table that are flying off the handle because they're here with, they're enjoying the game and they're do- getting crazy. Uh, but if someone else at the table needs to say, hey, you need to chill that person out. Address that with the moderator. Don't mm-hmm. don't bring that to the player because we don't really just now start like we don't need to start a personal fight right. between two players. If you have a problem, say something, and the moderator can calmly come in and say, "Hey, uh, let's let's scale it back a little bit. Let's tone it down. Maybe they can even private message the player that's kind of freaking out, sure. and we can very easily settle everything down. And, yeah, and that's how we would like to go forward with like working out these these sorts of disputes right and also like i just want to say you know my my door's always open come by my office (laughs) and no seriously just come on by and be like hey if you if you want to if you want to talk about anything having to do with the tournament just come by hunter's office and i'll i'll i have time and just sit down and we'll talk about it you know yeah that's actually a good point to say if you do have an issue with your moderator please don't hesitate to message Hunter or I. Unless mm-hmm. Hunter or I are the moderator you have an issue with, which I certainly hope Hunter and I wouldn't have that problem. Well, then just message the other one. Just and message start the a, other one. Right. Start a civil war. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we did, we briefly mentioned rage quitting. Uh, there is, there have been questions about like what happens if someone, you know, breaks these rules to an extreme degree or rage quits. What happens if the game is broken, right? A player yeah. is no longer in it because they were either kicked out or they left. What do we do from there? And honestly, there's not a good answer to this question. Um, right. it, it is going to be a case-by-case basis. If it's early enough in the game, we'll just say, oh, well, okay, I'm sorry, everyone. We will have to reschedule this game. If it's late enough in the game, maybe there is some sort of solution where we can have somebody sub in for that player and finish the game out. Uh, there, that will be an incredibly rare occurrence. I don't suspect we will do that, that probably will at not all. Happen. Yeah. Um, but you know, we we will never say never. Uh, so you know, be be prepared for us to take all of those sorts of things on a case by case basis. It just yeah. it totally depends. Uh, because sometimes too, it's not a matter of rage quitting. Maybe it's the person's power went out, and we have to we have to get to the bottom which of happened. what's going on. Oh, which do you happened remember? last year? Yeah. Yes. So we we have to kind of like let those things air out, and then it will probably result in a rescheduled game. We are not on like a specific time crunch to get these games done obviously we want to get them done as quickly as possible but we have not set a if they're not done by this date nobody else gets to put like no we will we'll play these forever if it takes forever it won't but that's the that's it the better mentality not. Yeah, it better, better not better not <laughs> better not take forever um okay so let's talk about my dojo which is my oh, yeah. office that i was referencing before <laughs> uh no that's not true the dojo is separate from my office um so uh, there are a lot of people that probably listen to this episode and like you're already pretty well familiar with all of the things that we're talking about. If you are not, um, a lot of people have been very good about this. Uh, please private message me on Discord. The reason I ask that you private message me, um, if you want to, uh, the, of course, I'm talking about setting up like practice TTS games. Um, the reason I ask that you private message me is because it just gives me an easy record of all the people that have done it. Um, because right. I can just go in order by my private messages and just be like, what was this one about? Okay, perfect. You're going in the dojo. Um, I have added only a small amount of people to the dojo at this point because I've been kind of thinking and testing out what I want to do with it. I've also had kind of the craziest month of my life. Um, so right. those of you that feel maybe like I haven't scheduled as many games as I should have, um, you're right. Um, and <laughs> I'm going to fix it right after PAX is my goal. Yep. Um 
So anyone uh, that has not already messaged me about doing uh, any practice CTS games, please go ahead and do it. Um, I will be adding you to a special Discord channel called Hunter's Dojo, where we will talk about um, setting up games so that people can play against other newer TTS players. Um, not necessarily uh, new to Twilight Imperium, by the way. Yeah. Though. Really just about trying to get you as used to TTS as possible so those games can go as smooth as possible. A lot of the things that I think people find out sometimes have to do with hardware. Um, a lot of times having a mouse... It, a, a mouse is important. Trackpads are kind of hard for TTS. Yeah, not, it's kind of hard to like do do all of that um so like little little things like that that you'll just kind of discover quality of life stuff that you can do to make it easier for yourself um to play um but yeah so um i have a couple small groups i think it's only like six people actually in the dojo at this point yeah. um and i'm gonna be adding more and then also just kind of encouraging conversation throughout december um i will be scheduling games to happen around christmas and even into um, once the TTS tournament actually starts, yeah. I will still try and schedule practice games for people that have not had their game come up yet. Um, right. Those of you that have already uh, done your practice game, I, I probably will not reschedule people for a second game just because there are a lot of you that want to do it. Um, however, I just want to let those two, I think there were two or three groups um, that I have already done. You guys were guinea pigs, and one of the things I realized was... I need to run them like strict yeah. TT like strict tournament games um and that they are not uh they're not necessarily for me to practice commentating and moderating at the same time which is something I tried to do it was not wise I won't do it again um I will probably have practice moderators and then me commentate um the game um but yeah uh, please uh, be looking for me to add you to the dojo if you've already messaged me, and we will get those going right after PAX, which is, like, I guess next week, essentially. Yeah, yeah this coming weekend, basically. Um, and so that's the same kind of goes for this extra moderator thing we keep talking about. We are pulling from the community to have our other moderators. If you want to be considered for this, you can definitely message us. We've had a few people reach out. Uh, we're not, like, automatically granting anyone who wants to do it access to it. We want to see you do a game. So either... Uh, be a part of one of Hunter's Dojo's games, reach out to him and, and get on the list of like moderators that he's looking to fill into these mm -hmm. slots. Or if, you're, if your schedule is not syncing up with us or whatever and you're able to record your own games, you record you moderating oh, a game, a great please idea. feel free to do that and, and then contact us and we'll find a way to get that file from you and we can check your thing and see how it goes and then let you know, you know how all that works. The thing about moderating that we mostly need is, first off, that ability to stream. If you have OBS, the software, open mm -hmm. broadcast software, I don't know, OBS, get that, record your game. That's something we want to be doing in the prelims is having moderators recording their own games just so that we have our own record for them and can release ones that make sense we're not trying to put every single game on youtube like we did last year but we do want to have as many recordings of the games as we can possibly get um just because it's nice to catalog those things right uh, the other important thing is we need moderators that are in european time zones and oceana time zones because yeah. those are the things that hunter and i have the most trouble filling just because the it's so offset from our schedules that it's really difficult for us to be the moderator of choice for those games. So if you live in any either of those time zones or you are regularly able to play games in those time zones, please let us know. We would love to try to get you in as a moderator. Yep, yep. Those I, those are definitely uh, the primary needs. Um, I also just want to say a little note. This is kind of like for everything we've talked about. Um, there is going to be a mixture of like, we're going to be trusting a lot of people to moderate games. Uh, people probably that we've known for a really long time and people that we haven't known for a really long time. Um, within the scope of a game, I think overall moderator is going to be in charge. Like, yeah. you, let, don't try and supersede your moderator by like going to me and Matt. Me and Matt are going to pick some people and be like, we, we're we going to trust these people and then yep. they need, they're going to run those games and within the scope of those games, uh, they have authority. Now, that being said, that is not, they're not dictators. They're not right. like, you know, they can't, if, if you have a moderator and there's some sort of issue, obviously we are the ones to go to. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I just I just want to make sure that everyone is ready for the idea that you're going to have a moderator. It's not somebody yeah. whose voice you've heard before and that you're 
we are basically saying we trust this person, and so you're going to have to trust this person to moderate your game. Right. At the end of the day, if you have like a rules dispute, you disagree with a ruling a moderator made. Well, in most situations, the moderator specifically will have access to Hunter and I. So -hmm. they will seek to get an answer from one of us on how we would rule it in that situation. So if you disagree with the moderator's ruling, there's probably a pretty good chance that you are already disagreeing with our ruling and we're going to stick with what the moderator said. But that's not 100% true. So if you have one where you know the moderator didn't get in touch with us and made a ruling that you are like 100% positive is against the rules, hit us up. But also at the end of the day, like if the game is finished, there's not much we can do do so we have mm-hmm. to stick with what the moderator did i'm you know you see this all the time in any sport the ref makes a call people go oh it's a bad call ref I'm sorry their the, call. The, the game finished i made right. bad calls last year in the tournament plenty of times and Ooh, that's too. just the way it goes I, we have to move forward and that's that's the ruling of the game and the rulings might change between games but what we will have in place is a system with our moderators where we keep track of the rulings we have made and we will try to either keep it consistent or publicly make sure it's known when we have to fix a ruling that we mm-hmm. did wrong. We mm-hmm. will be in charge of that stuff. We will handle it as as delicately as we can. Yes. Yes. All right. Let's uh let's get over to the errata zone. Let's how, jump how, into the errata how zone. about it. We're jumping back a couple episodes, aren't we? We got to yep. go back to the Sardak Nor guide yeah. and talk about some stuff we got there. Really, we only have one big thing to talk about with Sardak Nor. Um and and this is essentially we kind of glazed over diplomacy. So we're going to have one of those talk. We're going to have a yeah. diplomacy talk. But it's before we get into the diplomacy talk, some stuff. I know, right? Uh, let's let's hear what Dead Money had to say. Yes. Uh, a few other people echoed these thoughts, but I, I like the way Dead Money put it here. I know you don't want to hear about diplomacy, but personally, when playing Sardak, it's one of the top three strategy, strategy cards I will grab for the first round. The reason is that it fills a hole for Sardak early in regards to tech and plastic. It allows you to take a system for your first action, then second action to refresh those planets to pay for more plastic. You use your home world to pay for secondary on tech. This way, you get your first round tech and have resources to buy ships, which that's something we talked about having issues with in round one. Mm -hmm. So, okay, kind of sounds all right so far. Of course, this is situational based on map layout, but usually diplomacy is around for the late strategy picks. Plus, I think your whole argument of why you don't want to use diplomacy, i.e. it benefits everyone else's uh, game more than it benefits yours, is argued against by yourself for the whole episode when you suggest that to make deals with other players that may or may not be in your best interest, i.e. giving two trade goods for four or get trading with the player in the lead. I know. You're going to say that a couple trade goods extra for someone else is not the same as letting five other players refresh a planet of their uh, two planets of their choice. But I would counter with everyone is getting a similar benefit as you. Also, it is going to take one of their strategy tokens to do so, which might be a difficult choice if they were planning on a different strategy card during the first turn. Yeah, uh, I want to I want to throw in the quick rebuttal before yeah, we even get to our stuff. But Robofish uh, kind of jumped into this conversation too. Uh, th- so this is even just the first point against the diplomacy, which is Robofish saying the issue is one planet home system factions. Say Jord is spent on tech. If diplomacy is taken, the sole player gets to refresh Jord and the next best planet they have. So they start with a tech and likely seven more dollars worth of plastic, and that is huge in the first round. Yeah. So essentially. Uh, I'm not going to use Robofish's example, but just the sheer amount of examples we could cite that are kind of along those same lines as the reason that it is not equivalent to making favorable trades. Uh, It's kind of related to the same principle, I feel like, uh, that applies to like some action cards you can depend on coming out all the time because of the direction of the aggression of the card, which is a a term we've never actually named. I feel like several times we've mentioned this, (laughs) Um, but yeah. So like essentially when you play diplomacy round one, what you're saying is there are now five players that have an opportunity to do some wild stuff. They're not all going to do it, but the likelihood that five players are going to do or, or some players out of five are going to do something very, very strange and very cool for them that is now very bad for you yeah. is likely. If right. even two players take advantage of Diplomacy Round 1 to do something kind of edge casey that they would never really get to do in a normal right. game, that's very bad for you because you already start out behind. Yeah. 
Yeah, you and you kind of Dead Money pointed out our own argument, but I I don't I think they glazed over our argument, which is the big thing of we're looking to make favorable trades with like a person per yeah. per round or whatever. You know, like right. just just kind of get in the pocket of one person. Diplomacy is not that. It really is opening up everything to everybody else and in many cases more so than you can accomplish it yep. isn't oh i got them one extra dollar it's i got them six extra dollars and i only myself gained four mm -hmm. it's giving everyone the opportunity to gain more than you when you gain only just a little bit we want we, we are okay with someone else if with one person gaining more than us if we gain a little bit we are not okay with five players gaining more than us when we gain a little bit right that is too much it, it's it's just pushing that scale too far yeah, and I mean, so many edge casey stuff. I mean, Mentac getting cruisers round one. Yeah, uh, yeah. God, it, like, actually, if you bring in tech skips, it can basically get... It, it, you can never run out of weird cases. If, if you can Barony build. of Letnev is in your game, d no, just don't Absolutely do it. Absolutely not. Don't, just, you can't, you can't let Barony have access to diplomacy secondary. That's right, That's not a right. good idea. What, uh, can't L1 technically get inheritance systems round one if they have... If they have a yellow skip and you have diplomacy, is I it, don't even want to look through all the things to determine yeah, like, if that's true or not. Like, but probably so. But the, L1 can do crazy stuff for sure. Of course, of course. And uh, there's so there's it just doesn't end that type of stuff is what yes. I'm saying. Um, right. And the and it really is just about the sheer amount of players that you're making it available to. That's yep. why it feels. That's why it feels so different from giving one player favorable trades, basically. Right. It's right. this principle of allowing the entire table an opportunity to do good things for them versus allowing an individual player when I deem it necessary to do good things. Right. Right? Yes. All that being said, basically, you're not 100% wrong. Obviously, there are times when you've got a biz free in front of you and you can tell nobody else is going to have an opportunity or whatever. And then, yeah, okay, maybe diplomacy is an okay pick. You can get five extra dollars around one. But there's a lot of things a lot of boxes you need to check before that is an okay decision we talked about trade being a thing where like you got to check before you pick it diplomacy is that same story and mm -hmm. like double or triple the, the pressure that's on trade we already were like kind of nervous about you getting you taking trade because of what it could do to your game diplomacy almost has all those same problems yeah. so just you have to be very very careful when you pick diplomacy i and and i'm willing to accept that i'm kind of stubborn about diplomacy Right. I'm pretty stubborn about it, but yeah. I don't. I'm less stubborn, but even I agree with with this guy not really pushing diplomacy for Sardak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I would just hate to see people relying on. It. I think our our responsibility in making these guides is to try and lead people to make choices that are going to work in a lot of different games. Yes, and so that means that edge cases are difficult for us to deal with because yeah, it's like, well, absolutely. we. We're not trying to make an edge case compendium. We're trying right. to make a guide. Yeah, we don't have time to, to break down every single edge case. So things like diplomacy, things like crazy trade shenanigans, mm -hmm. any magic Christmas land scenario is just like, ah, it's too messy. We can't, we can't in good conscience recommend that to like newer players. Mm -hmm. and, and I do want to reiterate that we classified trade as a conditional pick. Right. Um, for Sardak round one, trade is something to be, to, that is to be desired if we can check off the right boxes and just right. make sure that we are going to do it the right way. Right. Um, let's do it. Let's talk about packs. Uh, we're doing yeah. packs. We don't have we're a whole lot packs. more to say about it, but we, we are, don't. We'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll be there this weekend. We're. I think our most availability is you know during the day, Friday and Saturday. We're actually kind of leaving town fairly early Sunday, so we won't be able to hang out much then. But you know, we'll be around Friday Saturday. We're gonna come check out the tournament that's happening Saturday, and we just want to see people. We have yeah. a channel on our Discord specifically for people going to packs. Uh, I have a role I can add you to. So just tag me or Hunter and say, hey, add me to the packs and yeah. we, will, we will get you in there uh you can also rate our podcast on your podcast app of choice uh apple Podcasts and itunes etc etc this improves our rankings and helps people see our show and learn more about twilight imperium and yep. dune uh you can find us on twitter at space cats pod facebook at uh space cats peace turtles you can find our twitch and youtube both by searching space cats peace turtles uh ti streams will be picking up after packs for mm -hmm. hunter when yes. he's in my house streaming from my computer that'll be weird <laughs> so that'll be fun for everybody uh i don't think we have any specific plans for that yet that's kind of 
too many no. weeks away, but maybe yeah. next week we'll have a bit more of an update yes, for yes, you. Yes, yes, You can find our Board Game Geek Guild at guild slash 3103. Uh, join our Patreon to be a part of the Galactic Council and vote on upcoming episodes or play games with us in the Goodian Brotherhood. Uh, little little perks like that. Be a part of the production of the show. And finally, join our Discord for fun conversations. Get those, those Patreon benefits. Uh, hit us up if you're going to PAX, etc., etc., etc. Um... I have been talking too much about comedy stuff at the end of this, and uh, yeah. I am exhausted from. <laughs> I have had the big, busiest month of my life. Um, uh, if you want to come to see me perform at Revolution Hall uh, tonight, it's, it's going to be tonight. Um, they the tickets might be sold out. I don't know if they are. If they they were fifteen dollars, if they're still available, they're still fifteen dollars. Um, come out! Oh God. <laughs> and that's it. That's the end of comedy stuff for Hunter for <laughs> yeah. for the month for uh, for a while. You won't hear me huh? talk about it for a while. But this yeah. <laughs> was this was I two was comedy festivals, one. two comedy festivals, a going away show for one of my best friends, a pa- a story in the paper that I had to do interviews <laughs> and photo shoots for, um, and that I didn't even I didn't like the photo shoot, but I had to do it, and it was like <laughs> it was weird, and I the story was good. It, it was a good story. It was a good story. Actually, what was that quote you really liked? They called me sexually liberated. <laughs> well, they they were, you, yeah. It's they, they but, called you a lot of things. And they also made it sound like you threw some massive shade on our entire audience, which is certainly not the case, but was right. a very funny quote nonetheless. Yeah, I just like, well, I, I don't I, I feel like you guys can relate to this. Like whenever whenever comedy so like whenever um I'm talking to like industry people and they ask me about like podcasts and I have to explain this show to them. Right. It's like I'm explaining the show because I want opportunities from them. And you have to understand explaining the show <laughs> to like, I mean, like, like I, I met the comedy booker for South by Southwest and he liked me. He liked my stuff. And I was like, excited and he was like oh and i heard you have this podcast and i was like oh god oh no um, <laughs> how do we get into this to like first explain, do you know what board games are that's yeah, step like, one step to step explain two. <laughs> to a guy like that who could like he could book me for sp- south by southwest and that would be so good for my visibility as a comedian and now i have to explain to him what twilight imperium is that's all i meant in the story yeah, was that right. it makes me feel like a dweeb because it's just <laughs> I'm, okay how about this how about this, listener? If you're judging me right now, how about you stand up from your office computer right now or wherever it is that you work? Maybe you work yeah. at a restaurant, whatever. Walk directly to your boss, okay? <laughs> and if you're if you're kind of the manager or whatever, call up your corporate overlord, whatever that is. <laughs> Whoever it is that you answer to and be like, hey, I just want to talk to you real quick about a game called Twilight Imperium. I love the name. And here it's about there's plastic and cardboard and there's there's space Nazis uh, or space leprechauns. What am I talking about? There's Oof, there's space weird, Irishmen. Yeah, there wouldn't be space Nazis. That's odd. And space <laughs> kitties. And I also want a better job than I even have. I would like to be promoted, but also I want to talk about Twilight Imperium. It would make you feel weird. Yeah. You would feel yeah. weird. Well, Honor, I'm proud of you, and I'm proud of your sexually liberated, but too confident, yet simultaneously apprehensive stage persona. Thank you for listening to Space Cat's Peace Turtles, and thanks to Ben Prunty for the use of his music. You can find more at benpruntymusic.com and benprunty.bandcamp.com. Pax Magnifica, Bellum Gloriosum.